In early America, families suspected and revered older people. Older family members remained within the family until their death. Before the American Revolution, the main religious and political leaders were older. The Puritans believed that old age was a sign of God's favor. At that time, however, a few people lived into the old age, making up only 2% of the total population. But this old system of family responsibility for the age began to disappear, so that by the beginning of the 19th century, the need for poor houses and old age homes grew. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, caring for my mother in my home for 12 years. Uh, the reason she came to live with me is uh, she lived a distance away and she kept falling, blacking out and falling. She had stairs in her home. My father had just died and uh, I suggested she come uh, live with me because my other brothers and sisters um, we couldn't come up with a routine of any kind. By the end of the 1800s, charity hospitals, poor farms, workhouses for the able-bodied, and almshouses were available to paupers. Benevolent societies and charity organizations created some of the earliest organized old age assistant programs. The Civil War and War of 1898 created thousands of disabled and older veterans who needed long-term care. This led to the need for veterans' benefits as well. Nursing began to emerge as a profession in healthcare for the poor, the elderly, and immigrants. A new wave of privately owned facilities called rest houses were established. The government also began building hospitals and homes to provide long-term care while elders might live into old age. California was the first state government to pass a law that provided an old age pension, a cash benefit to those in need. The city of New York purchased Blackwell's Island as a remote spot for paupers and elders. On the island was built a charity hospital, a smallpox hospital, a hospital for the incurables, a workhouse, and an asylum for the mentally ill. By the beginning of the 20th century, employers began providing assistance for retirees. The American Express Corporation became the first private employer to offer a sponsored pension program for those over 60 who were unable to work. Early on, the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad Corporation also established pensions for their retirees. The number of people living into old age increased. Between 1900 and 1930, the average lifespan increased by 10 years. From 1930 to 1990, the average lifespan increased by another 15 years. During the Great Depression, the elderly were hit particularly hard. 30% of the elderly population lived in poverty. Their savings disappeared. They could not work, and their families could not provide assistance. Private charities could not keep up with the need. Local and state governments looked to the federal government for help. My responsibilities as a registered nurse have included giving prescribed medications, taking and recording vital signs and weights, keeping accurate record of medications and treatments, and keeping record of patients' diagnoses. I also draw blood work when needed. I report patients' signs and symptoms and other problems to the physician. Um, my responsibilities include writing, evaluating, and updating care plans, organizing and coordinating care with physicians, dietitians, physical and occupational therapy, pastoral care, and activity aids. In 1935, many old age pension ideas were presented. Dr. Francis Townsend proposed a plan that offered a $200 monthly pension to be paid to every American 60 and older. It would be financed by 2% federal sales tax. He gathered 10 million signatures for his plan and presented it to Congress. His proposal led to a federal response. The Old Age Assistance Act was passed in 1935 and gave $14 per month regardless of work history. Because the elderly now had some cash, old age homes became a cottage industry. Sister Mary Angelina Teresa of the Carmelite Order of Nuns saw a need for a holistic approach to caring for the elderly and providing for their needs. This order began to establish nonprofit facilities throughout the United States that provided beautiful environments for their residents who were unable to live out their retirements with respect and security. Benevolent care continued even when finances expired. Well, 
The most important right of the aged person is to be allowed to be their own person. Then they have the right to be treated with dignity and respect. When President Franklin Roosevelt signed the Social Security Act of 1935, he said, we can never ensure 100% of the population against 100% of the hazards of life. But we have tried to frame a law which will give some measure of protection against a poverty-ridden old age, while providing some financial security, the high costs of medical care continue to rise and became the greatest cause of poverty in old age since 75% of the elderly did not carry adequate health care insurance. Pressure from a growing elderly population for health care coverage led to the creation of a the Medicare and Medicaid Act of 1965. The combination of income assistance from the Social Security Act and health care insurance from Medicare and Medicaid made the idea of retirement more feasible. The Nursing Home Reform Act of 1987 mandated better building construction for residents, mandated more staff training, and established expanded residents' rights and quality care. In my opinion, the rights of the elderly include, but are not limited to, the right to be treated as an adult and with dignity, the right to refuse treatments if they so choose, the right to decide end-of-life care, and they have the right to see family, friends, neighbors, and anyone else they so choose. They have the right to eat or choose not to eat and to be assisted with eating if they are unable. They have the right to a safe environment and a safe, warm home. They have the right to choose care providers, medications, and therapies. Older Americans are currently living in their own homes, shared family homes, assisted living facilities, long-term care facilities, independent cottages, and hospice care. In each of these environments, residents have the rights that must be protected. The right to an adequate shelter, nutritious food, a sense of community, financial security, a family, health care, to love and be loved, to make choices, to be treated with kindness, dignity, and respect, and to feel a sense of pride in a life well lived. And it was even unheard of at that time that people should be treated to get better. Because before, if they went there to a nursing home, they went there to die. But Mother Angeline, under Mother Angeline, and the sisters, as the care started to evolve, one of our homes in New York City was the first home in the whole United States that had therapy in a nursing home because it was unheard of that people should be rehabilitated and, and people were not coming there to die but they were coming there to live. Yeah, along with all that was mentioned, uh, I also want to explain that living as a resident uh, now in this day and age. We're free to come and go as we please. Uh, we can visit family for days. We can take little vacations and return to our room because everything is tr treated with the holistic approach. The fastest growing segment of society is the elderly. All of society will feel the impact of baby boomers. As long as health and finances are available, getting older can be a positive experience. Senior communities have been established that offer social, educational, and sporting opportunities for the residents who can remain home. Those who must decide to leave their homes have assisted living, long-term care, and hospice facilities that meet individual needs. We will all grow older. Families, churches, communities, health care providers, and the government all have a responsibility to guarantee those who have worked hard, raised families, and contributed to society can age with dignity and respect.